Hey fellas, welcome to Guys in Grief, sponsored by Emma's Footprints and First Candle. We started this podcast for fathers like us that have experienced pregnancy or infant loss. You see, when we went through these life-changing experiences, we struggled to find resources that were specifically for men in support of navigating this grieving process. We're not doctors. We're not psychiatrists. We're three friends. We're grieving fathers that have been through the unthinkable and want to help others by talking about the unique and often undiscussed perspective of men that have experienced child loss. We welcome you to join us on this journey. Share your stories, the challenges, laugh with us, maybe shed a tear or two, and help each other as we navigate honoring our children, grief, supporting our family, and trying to find better days ahead. Let's get into it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Guys in Grief. I'm Brad. Brandon. I'm Brian. Hey, fellas. We are uh, good to see Woo-hoo! you all. Yeah, What's up, boys? This is going to be a, I don't know, fun. I don't know if we yeah, can post a go. grief episode or never let's call it a fun episode. Today. But we're going to have a, uh, it's going to be, uh, yeah, let's just go with fun because it, it's, it's like the, the word that's on the top. Yeah. We're allowed um, to have fun. That's right. We're Good allowed point. to have fun. And we're going to talk about and some have fun. We're going to talk about some real life shit in today's episode that I think a lot of guys and all of our female listeners uh, will relate to and, uh, you know, maybe have a lot of heads nodding uh, while they're listening to their AirPods or whatever else might be. Uh, but fellas, also, you know, this is a grief podcast, so we got to keep it real. And there's some grief here because... Um, about three, four weeks ago, we very boldly on this podcast said, when this one airs, the Bills might be winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> and now we look like three big old B first letter dipshits. Uh, uh, that did not age well, guys, huh? Uh, Man, uh, who I mean, threw up I'm the curse. Yeah, I'm Bills Mafia till I die, but oh, Truth. what happened? I, I feel I like know. they were all they they were as flat as I I don't know I can't even explain how flat it could be but it's they were flat and yeah um it, it wasn't a good look it wasn't a good look for Bills shout Mafia. out to the Bengals the Bengals outplayed Truth. us that day Truth. and Joe Burrow's an assassin I, and, he's a stone cold killer and shout out to yeah. any listeners that are like you guys are idiots and the Bills aren't going the whole way because you were right. <laughs> So All kudos right. to you. Kudos to you guys. Uh, you guys yeah. Different gold kind of star. grief. Now right. we what, can get into the real stuff. What are those like memes of, like star. that didn't age well? Like right. that is literally what we're gonna have to post yeah. on that clip of us talking about it. But uh at least as of the day we're recording this, Damar Hamlin was the other part that we talked about in that. Hey. Damar is doing really, really well. So he was at the game. Uh and a forest beyond the trees, bigger things in the world. Tomorrow, mm-hmm. Hamlin's health. I'll take that over a Super Bowl. Genuinely yes, mean that. Anyway. You're darn right. Yep. Absolutely right. You're darn right. So, guys, we're going to shake things up a little bit here. We're, what? You know, uh, yeah, we're kind of halfway dun, through dun. season one of Guys in Grief, and we're going to do some seasons with a certain amount of episodes. Uh, we're about a halfway point, which is kind of crazy, considering we feel like we just started this thing. Uh, we've all told our stories. We had our intro pod. We've had a couple guests. Uh, of course, we do G and G Q and A every single week, which is getting a lot of really good feedback. We're hearing from our listeners new topics that you guys want to hear us weigh in on, and uh, and hopefully come and be a part of that conversation with us as well. Today, we're gonna we're gonna go a little different, and we're gonna stay still in the vein of what we do as the Guys in Grief podcast. Um, but we don't have any guests today. We're not sharing any of our own stories today. What we rogue. are going to do is, yeah, we're going rogue. Let's go rogue, boys. Rogue one. Love it. Yeah, Star Wars style. Um, we are going to have a session, the whole damn thing, called Nobody Prepares You For dot, dot, dot. Dun, and dun, each of us dun. are going to come in with something that nobody prepared us for going through this. And as we've thought about this episode, we thought it was – uh really impactful for the things that like might not be as heavy as a, or not maybe heavy is not the right word as, as, as impactful as a guys in grief, GG, GG Q and a topic, but super important that we never wanted to glaze over them. And I got a feeling like post doing this, we're going to get messages from people like, Ooh, talk on this type of stuff too. Yep. So absolutely. I don't know about you guys, but I'm super excited about today. Time to jump on in. I'm so excited. I can't wait to connect with our listeners over some of these topics. It's, 
so important, and this is going to be fun. I remember on episode one and uh, a clip that we put onto the world was you know, me saying like, we're going to talk about the things that don't get discussed for men. And I feel like this is an episode that is just chock Target. full of that. Right. Rapid yeah. Rapid fire. Target right in the middle of the bullseye. <laughs> um, so we're going to hit nine of those and hopefully this becomes a thing and we start doing, you know, one or two of these a season. So I'm going to start us off. You guys cool with that? Uh, yeah. Cool. What he said. Fellas. What he said. <laughs> that's what he said. he said. Fellas, nobody prepares you for how fucked up it is that you have to work with a funeral home and sign a death certificate for your child. I remember. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. We're, start, we're starting out heavy. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, boys, to like uh, you yes. know, take that. Wah, wah, wah. You came in hot. <laughs> it's real, though. It's, it, it's, yeah, but it's real. so real. But, but like, I want to talk about it from a way of like, yeah, nobody fucking prepares you from that. Like, we could sit here and talk about how devastating it is. Jeez. And how, you yeah. know, all the emotion and I don't know about you guys, but I was literally filling that shit out, like hiding it from Jessica. So she didn't see it in the hospital. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, but like, it, yeah, we could do that. Or we could talk about it. Like that's pretty fucked. Up. Uh, yeah. I, true. Truth story. I remember with Beckham being in the hospital, mm-hmm. our uh, Stanford hospital in, in Connecticut, who was absolutely amazing. and talked about them in my podcast. And, uh, I, and I hope you listen to this and you know how much we love you. You have been a, a huge part of our, our children's story. You birthed Ashton and so on um i remember Anne with this beautiful coy approach uh you know we're in the the hospital for a couple hours now and jessica's starting to go through labor to birth beckham eventually and Anne, she's been with us for a couple hours she pulls me to the side and she's like hey here's a little packet of information and you know look at it when you need to whenever you can and there's some things in there for you to fill out and just no rush just you know this is for you. Thanks, Anne. Thanks. I like, I don't, is it discharge papers? Is it whatever? And I yeah. love how she, appro- I'm saying this in a joking way, couldn't, couldn't be happier with how she approached it. Like if she hit me with this sledgehammer to the face of what it actually was. So, you know, I gave it some time. I opened it up and then I read it. And I remember distinctly texting the two of you. And this is before like the three of us were close as a group. Mm-hmm. Texting the both of you simultaneously because you have yep. all, both been through your loss, saying it's so fucked up that we have to sign a fetal death certificate. Absolutely. Let me, let me stop there, boys. Oh, that's yeah. fucked I, up. Nobody prepares for that. I, I don't think I signed it. I, I think I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not signing this. And then I like walked away. Really? And I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, I had the choice, <laughs> I would. Jeez. Yeah, I, like I, I honestly, I was like, I can't handle this right now. And then I think somebody had to track me down, and they were like, mm. "You, you yeah. have to." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's not like you go to college and they're like, "Do you want to take a class on how to sign a death certificate?" Death certificate. Right? Oh, or here's Dead the right child. decorum to right. to do that yeah. with, right? I I, yeah. I don't know, like like you said, you're almost speechless when those things get. Well, I mean. The nurses were really awesome at Sisters Hospital also, but, like, they give you the paperwork, and, and you're like, oh, that says death certificate on top. Yeah. I thought this was, like, paper, more paperwork just to, like, yeah. finish the day out. But, Brett, no. Brett, you bring up a good point. Like, some people <laughs> just do it in a numb way. Like, maybe it didn't happen to you, but it's just, like... I'm pointing it's to my just, face. It's, yep. Yeah, it's it's a process, and you're mm-hmm. like, have some compassion, dude, or like, yeah. or gal. Where, uh, well, know, and that's just, I'm they, so thankful for how Anne how did they did it. it. Truth yeah. be told, like I, yeah. I genuinely, yeah. I think Anne might be listening to some of this because we know actually. Shout out again to Stanford Hospital. They've actually put guys in grief on their bereavement paperwork that anybody that has gone through loss uh, is receiving our podcast as a resource, which is pretty incredible. Um, A close friend of that. Yeah. A close friend of Brian and I's uh, Kelly and Chris Mosier. Kelly is a nurse there and has been a a big supporter. Hey Kelly. Hey Kelly. Um, And so uh, a lot of love there. And I I genuinely mean this, like how Anne approached it, but I think it's also because of the relationship that we had established with Anne, how she had already been treating us. Mm -hmm. If she hadn't done that and somebody else just walked into the room and handed that to me, I'd have been like, what the 
fuck is this? And gone to chase that person yeah, down the yeah. hall. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe the thought here is like, uh, hey, it, it is pretty messed up that we have to send those things. But also, man, nurses are special people too. Like that, that wasn't Absolutely. on the, the list of things here, but man, that's pretty cool. They're pretty man. impressive. Absolutely. All right. Can I go next, Brad? Do it. Please. Nobody prepares you for, and this is, let me back up actually before I get into it. <laughs> I pitched this idea to Brad and Brandon a couple <laughs> episodes ago, a couple weeks ago. And my idea for a segment was, fuck you, man. And it's kind of a play on like, come on, man. If any of you guys watch football, like the Randy Moss thing, and they do it on like Monday Night Football. But it- P.S. I just have to tell you, you know, uh, when we create the podcast, you have to click if your podcast is clean or explicit. I think we're starting to. I, oh, I want to clean. Yeah. We might uh, have to update bleep that. You, but man. I'm totally bleep good. You. P- 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 PG. I mean, we're, almost, we're not rated R. Screw but you, PG. Fella. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, nobody prepares I've already dropped you. the F bomb like five times on this episode, that by the way. So, be. I think we're okay with it. Yeah. I think we're it, okay. It, the whole purpose of it was everybody who's listened to this podcast, including the host, have had people say stupid shit to you that infuriates you to the core. Ooh. And you're going through such a claps. horrific thing. And somebody comes up to you and says, I know what you're going through. Hmm. No, you hmm. don't, dude. No, nope. the fuck you, you don't. man. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let, I, I will Ooh. gladly switch it over to explicit so that we can drop the F-bombs. We've had a couple whiskeys yeah. where it's yeah. 1030 at night. Yeah. Fuck you, guy. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, it's just there, there's so many like cliche statements that people say that think that Brandon's it makes got you one. feel better. I, it's like, I have you're going to be OK. You're, you're going to oh. be OK. No, fuck the fuck you, I'm not. Man. No, I'm not. It's like the uh, Mitch Middlestad uh, exactly. episode where Brandon's like, "Ooh, my palms are getting sweaty." Yeah, like, uh, man, yeah. I just <laughs> thought, Dude, I just thought, been waiting for the. I told oh, you, I've been loved boiling. This. He's coming so, out, people. It is too. I'm coming. I'm like breaking stuff now. My room is gonna be a, a shatter. So, you got a like, table back it, there? I do have Ooh. a table to jump over <laughs> and on, on, um, on. I don't. I mean, tables are expensive too. By the way, anyways. Side note. She's in a better place. Oh. No, the fuck she isn't. The place yeah. I want her is in my arms, reading a book with me and yep. watching TV and me singing lullabies and me feeding her. No, the fuck she's not in a better place, in my opinion. I don't know about you. Yeah. Lady. <laughs> yeah, like, from sure. All right. We, we, can whatever argue whether not, oh. we can argue whether or not heaven is a better place. All right. Fine. That is a theological discussion cool. that people might want to partake in. One time. Nobody in this situation of what we're going through wants to hear that. Right? Like, we're not talking about, like, is heaven better than earth? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can say that. Like, I'd rather have her in my arms. My arms is a better place than anywhere else. The next 100 years, until we go there as (laughs) life naturally progresses. Then we can talk about that then. At this moment, fuck you. Better places than my arms. I I got one for you guys on this. (laughs) this topic uh people say stupid shit um <laughs> poor guy at stanford hospital uh so i just give a lot of love to stanford hospital and they are incredible uh but the valet guy at stanford hospital uh did not know what buzz saw he was walking into with brad Kogan that day so we uh we're leaving Stanford. Brandon, you know this one. That's why you're already laughing. Brian, you probably know this one too. I, I are... don't, but I'm laughing at Brandon's reaction. I'm, I'm excited for what's coming. We are. Le- and it's so bad, but it's 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 comical now. Years later, um, you know, like any when you have a child, you're up in labor and delivery, the maternity, and then the dad leaves, goes, gets the car, and mom gets wheelchair down, right? When you had Austin yeah. and yep. Story, uh, uh, Gavi. Gavi, and all of our, our children, that's the normal protocol. There's no valet for when you've lost your child, right? There's not a separate exit. So <laughs> poor guy, as the valet at Sanford Hospital, I come down by myself, understandably so. I'm clearly distraught, but, you know, this guy's not, you know, some emotional quotient expert. And he comes up to me all chipper. And he's like, 
congratulations, sir. Was it a boy or a girl? And I go, I lost my fucking child. And the, I'm pretty pale as anybody who's watching this on video, like just blood sinking out of this poor kid's face. And like mm. he was doing probably what he was trained to do. And he was yeah. this kindest, most sincere question of all time in the moment. He had no clue he what he no was clue. walking into. A kid walking but I was to like, him. literally the worst thing that somebody could have said to me in that moment in time was the question that you asked me. And I, I responded as I did. And he, like I said, he, his blood sank out of his face. And I was like, you had no clue. You yep. had no ill will. I appreciate you doing what you do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sorry that I hit you with that. But yeah, that one, I will never forget. You hit him with the Undertaker intro. <laughs> 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 Should I bust the WWE belt? It's right yeah. there. Seriously, why not? Walking around like Stone Cold Steve, Steve Austin in that bad boy. Brian, give oh, us one. You got, you got right. uh, somebody hey, saying something to you? Ooh. Yeah, oh, God. I mean, I, I think I already said, like, mm -hmm. you're going to be okay. Oh, I, I had one person say, uh, it, it'll be best if you guys move on. What? And I, I, I couldn't believe, like, I, I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Move on from. You want me to move on? What are you talking about? Like, it, never. You have no clue. Yeah, like I'm never moving on. Like, this is my this son. Is it. Right. You know, fuck off. Like I'm. I he's still part of my life, part of our life, part of your life. To the person right. that said it, and it's like, uh, no. Next, it like <laughs> I, you almost like next because mm -hmm. yeah, I filled up my whiskey on that comment right there. Yeah, just I mean, some off. of the people uh, that we're discussing, you can't mm -hmm. say go sure. fuck off. Um, well, you can. Sorry, we're dropping a lot of f bombs. This, you but totally sorry, can say that. Years. There's you some totally people though, that. like you gotta, you know, you gotta maintain a relationship because yep, uh, yep, we're all know, there. They're part of your life, but. Mm. Man, uh, that that hit me to my core where I was I just couldn't do it. And I also want to mention if anybody's listening and they they don't know what to say like they're listening to maybe support somebody who had loss, just listen. Like we've talked about it. Ask genuine of, questions, right? Yeah. That was it. we said that in the first episode. Because there's multiple stages that we're talking about here. There's people that don't show up at all which we're yep. going to get into with that mm -hmm. you know they just ignore you that's yep. probably the worst <clears throat> then you got people that say stupid shit which we're dedicating this podcast to and laughing about it and oh. then you got the, your real genuine people that want to ask questions about how mm -hmm. you're doing ask probing questions be there for them offer to help them give them a hug Great point. like that's, the That's whole all point. it takes. Yeah. It, you don't it have takes. to say something so profound that we look at you and say, oh, my God, I'm all of a sudden better. Like, Changed my – yeah. Gross. yeah. So, yeah, that's – I just wanted to say that. I have one more, but I, I don't think I should say it. <laughs> yes, Come on. Say it, say it, say it. Oh, yeah, this is like gosh. the Peloton okay. where it's like, hey, oh. put the, the earmuffs on the kids around Listen. or put the kitties out of the room. Right, put, That's this episode, people. We should have oh, said that 18, my, 48, 18 minutes ago. But, 18 uh, minutes ago, almost 19. Okay, last one for me, at least. I don't know about anyone else. There was a moment where I was holding my, holding my Astoria and a person with me. Oh, I'm going out of frame for this one. <laughs> Said, it looks like she's sleeping. And in return, I said, yes, because she's she's passed away. Immediately. Someone in your immediate family. Too, in I my immediate clarify. family, yes. So I had to give that moment to things you probably shouldn't say. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say F you at this moment. But it was it was the thought was there. I'm not gonna lie to you. No, yeah. thank but you for sharing. I mean, it. You're I had to, to help. Literally, right and now. some people don't understand. Like, you have to listen. You have to pay attention. You have to listen. Just be a voice. That's all we. That's all we're asking. Be a no. be a set of ears. That's all we're asking. We're not asking for anything else other than you just listening and just being compassionate. Yep. 
Yeah, that one got my palm sweaty. P.S. Yeah. Also, get my palm sweaty. Brian, <laughs> stop fixing your hair in the camera. Know, you look I'm so. Like, just... You're with two bald men. I wear a hat every episode. Are you um, know, yeah, I'm you're just, really uh... rubbing it in there with the slick hair this week, bud. Hey, you know, it's just pure jealousy. I realize, but it's 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 hurting my heart a little bit. Just a little uh, bit. Brandon, what does nobody prepare for? Oh, no one's prepared for the whole situation with losing a child being a blur. Um, I can literally you know? not remember a lot of things. I think me and Brad <laughs> have the same problem. Um, there's, I'm a spotty person when it comes down to remembering everything. The, losing a story, I remember pockets of it. But a lot of it was a blur to me, and I'm not sure why. That's a big question for me. I don't know why. Weird. I mean, I think I know why. It's, it is it is yes. such a painful feeling. Yeah. And I also agree. Yeah. Like, I, that two-week span after we lost Austin, uh, it, was, it was an absolute blur. So many things happened that I don't even remember. You know, like mm -hmm. even picking out, the, I, I mean, I hate to get sad about it, but like to picking out the grave site yeah. Yeah. in the cemetery, it was pouring rain. I think my mom and Lindsay were there and they're FaceTiming me. And the, like, I, I, somebody reminded me that of the other day and I was like, oh my God, God I, I don't, I don't remember that. It, yeah. It's, I, I get it. I, <laughs> On the Emma's Footprints uh, podcast that predated, we literally launched Guys in Grief with Jessica and I doing an episode of the Emma's podcast, our sponsor, shout out. Uh, there was a part of the episode where Jessica is talking about one of our earlier miscarriages and some of the physical challenges that she had with that she was supposed to go to work in Spain uh, we were working in the same company. She was Forgot supposed to go that. to Spain yep. for work. Mm -hmm. And because of the challenges that she was having, literally like last second, wasn't able to go. And the, on the podcast, I go, I'm not going to lie. I forgot all about that. Like, I just, <laughs> yeah. just remember. Did you hear me say, I remember that. Like, I was like, I totally forgot about that. Nope. Didn't even remember that part. It's, and, and so fellas oh. listening to like, you know, we're, we're trying to make this one a, I don't want to say lighthearted. I mean, clearly it is a little bit here, um, but also relatable because yeah. what you're going through and where we're making these pieces a little bit more satirical is for a good reason. Like yeah. if it's, if there's parts you don't remember, don't give yourself a hard time. If right. things felt like a blur, it's pretty natural, uh, at least amongst these three guys. We're no doctors, as we've said from day one, <laughs> but from three lived experiences, these things are pretty real and, and don't beat yourself up is, is kind of where I'm trying to get here. You right, will laugh again. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I so. promise you. Yeah. And those of you that what's been cool too, is actually seeing some people that have reached out to us recently. You know, the, one of the first people that posted on our Facebook group lost a child like 20, 25 years ago and mm -hmm. posted the headstone from that. And I think the, the, the date was like 1999 or something like that. That sounds familiar. Uh, yes. Yeah. And we've had somebody reaching out to us recently, which has been awesome that lost their child like 10 years ago. And those people are dealing with what we're talking about and probably laughing a lot more with us than those of you that have lost a child, you know, five, six weeks ago. And again, we, we hope our levity is, is appropriate and, and not off putting, um, you know, we've gone through a lot of episodes where there's a lot of heaviness and, uh, and we said from day one, we were going to do this in the ways in which guys grieve and not in a group counseling setting and not in a way that, you know, our wives are here. So we've got to be different. This is how we go through this, but also be very, very clear. All three of us men have gone through this years ago. And so we're at a different point in our journey. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, uh, give us a little bit of, uh, of a pass. If, uh, if we come off a little crass on some of this, um, some of this is moment in time, um, but also by intention too, for the many men that have gone through this and may be at similar stages. And we feel you if somebody says something stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gr because great, you great. probably, especially for that one, they're probably like, oh yeah, somebody said that to me last week and I right. want to decapitate them. Face. Yeah. Great, great uh, disclaimer. Great disclaimer. The words that are said from Brad Kogut. Thank Brian you, Spoon, fellas. Brandon Thurman. Good job. 
<laughs> Guys, nobody prepares you. We're going to go a little deep on this one here. We're going to mm -hmm. pivot. Nobody prepares you for the new relationship that you'll have with death. Ooh. I, I yeah, go, it's go. deep. Go, Kobe. Um, you know, two, three years ago, the thought of seeing a picture of a deceased child would have sent a shiver up my spine. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't Great. think I would have had the fortitude to be able to do that. I know for a fact, 99% of the people in my life, barring the two that I'm looking at right now and, you know, others that I can count on, probably two hands, maybe a little bit more than that, have ever seen a picture of Beckham. Truth, yeah. true fact. Mm -hmm. Um, and I respect that. And I, and that's for good reason because people don't know how to, uh, to react in that moment and they're not prepared for that. And I have a new relationship with death. I'm not more prepared for it. I'm you know, still as scared about death as I was when I was, you know, a, a child. Um, but to talk about death, I mean, clearly I, I think we're all okay with it. We wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Um, I would love to see somebody's you know, loves a weird word. We the the adjectives for what we do with this podcast are so hard to figure out the right would, ones, right? Like, like I'm excited about our podcast. That sounds wrong. I yeah. would love to see the picture. No, that sounds wrong too. So so you know, again, we're not professionals here. Please uh, give us a little levity uh, or a little bit of a pass. Um, but I'd be honored is probably the better uh, word. Good point. That Battle you would word. show me the picture of your your child that has passed. Um, because I have a new relationship with how I think about death and, mm -hmm. and a new comfort level with it. So would you say that, you, I mean, you said that you feel the same way about yourself and death after that. I mean, did, did your loss have any effect on your, your own opinion of death? My own mortality is still yeah. the same as it was. You know, I'm 38 years old. I remember my poor mom. I remember when I was a kid waking up, like screaming, crying, like, I don't want to die one day. Like that was a legit thing that I did. Um, I don't think that's necessarily changed. Um, my understanding of, you know, the situations that were in, uh, and, and, and support and empathy for others is, is new. Um, but also a second piece to that is my trigger about Ashton's death is super high yeah, right i agree with that i uh, he walks into a parking lot and it's grab the hand as fast as you can. every parent does that of course right. but like i think you guys know like since you've been through what you've been through like any of those little things um you know i see a child hurt in a movie those things used to just be sort of like i used to be able to chalk them up as like it's a movie and i don't all the emotional swings of a movie like I was, I, I watched them for pure entertainment. You know, you're in love. Great. You're dying. Okay. Uh, you won the thing. Amazing. Like I was never like in tears about it. Now, when I see those things, especially children being harmed or impacted. Yeah. It may be death or not. Obviously that's an even, an even bigger piece. Um, yeah. but it is a much more emotional trigger for me than it used to be. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause I think when we, I lost Austin and I'll talk about it a little bit when I tell my story on a, a future podcast, but I, I had a, a moment there where I, I actually wish I, I would be the one that passed away so he could live. Super and I don't know man. if that's like, uh, that uh, it's very deep and maybe sad, but I, I, I am less I guarantee scared there's about, guys listening right now nodding their head with you. Bro. Yeah. And I, I'm less scared about dying than I was before I lost Austin because I, part of me thinks that if I die, I'm, I'm going with Austin and Beautiful I'm, I'm going to see him soon. Um, and yeah, my, my personal opinion on death has changed, um, for myself because I'm, I miss him and I want, I want to be with him, you know? Yeah. I, I think I can relate to putting death as a, I don't know. No, no one really close, close to me. Like my grandparents and stuff like that. My grandparents passed away, but like no one really close to my immediate family has passed away and uh, only my daughter. So I, I always looked at it as like one of those things of Teflon. Like I'm never going to mm -hmm. be there. I'm okay. Yeah. This brought some reality to it. And I, 
I just never really put it in that kind of scope before until losing my own child and, you know, holding my child while she's dead. So like those things never really, I'm, I'm good. I'm tough. I'm okay. I always brush things off until it happens home. And now you're like, well, this is real. Yeah. This is reality. Yeah. This is, this is, this is, this is no joke. Like they're not coming back. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Yeah. You don't get other yeah. lives. This is not a video game. This is real life. That's right. Yeah. There's no one up here, right? <laughs> right. So yeah, definitely. So I agree with you, B. I agree with you also, Brian. Yeah. yeah. Our relationship with that has changed. Brian, give us another one. So this is something that my wife and I went through and I, I think uh, Brad and Brandon went through it, but receiving mail that has your lost one's name on it. And to take me a step further, further, Linz and I actually received mail with the not the same day, the bill from when Austin was born and the bill from the hospital of when he passed away. Wait. I don't know if the sound of my head hitting the microphone yeah. triggered, yeah. Um, but I, 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 I want to bash my Ooh. head on the microphone. Like nobody prepares you for that. Like, come on. It, seeing your lost one's name on a piece of mail is, is one thing because I remember there was a couple days and, and it still comes in because, you know, I, I don't know how the mail works i hate mail it's usually bad news and bills but yeah like we would get um, a letter with his name on it like two three months after he passed and i'd have a be having a good day where i'm like okay i'm progressing like i'm you know Linz and i did something good and then you open up the mail and you see his name and it just brings you back to square one and you're like what the fuck yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No. I'm my, dropping a lot of. No, we're we're totally switching this to explicit. This is our, this is our rated. This bad is the boy oh, yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Look at these bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> here's a, yeah. here's a golf yeah, ball one. Need Excuse to change me, this guys. to explicit though, because the reality is, is like none of this is clean. None of this That's is true. easy. None of this is normal. Yeah. None of this is is you know. Uh, it feels good uh, to. Curse. To get it Damn all. right, it does. And, and uh, fellas, if you're listening, uh, shout an f bomb out with us now. Like one, two, be, three. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> um, it. It's such a great point, and I, you know, I didn't have to go through that uh, because of where our children were along in the process. So, um, I, I sidestepped that one. But ooh, that's a trigger. And you know what? And uh, medical professionals. I don't know if any of you are listening out there for any research. I'm sure, you know, we've said very clearly, we are not professionals. So you're probably not listening to us to get any advice, but if you are, you know, there's many of you that are unbelievable in this space. And many of us have shouted you out. Uh, those of, that have impacted our lives, but those of you that aren't, that don't have the bedside banner, that don't think about this type of stuff. Don't think about when the bills come. Don't mm -hmm. think about, you know, whose name is on the bill or any of that type of stuff, like you got some work to do Absolutely. because you leave just as an indelible memory on our experience and our children as the bright lights in your profession too. So, uh, you know, learn up a little bit, people. I think to add on to yours, Brian, I, I think ours was just like a flub. We registered at Bye Bye Baby. And you know they ask for like, uh, yeah. you know your child's name, yeah. and they're like send you yeah. the coupons and all that stuff. And we oh, got it shit. after. And we're like, oh, that's... well, that would have been nice. And like that wasn't even like not their yeah. fault at all. Like we just registered. Nobody prepares you for that. Yeah, no one prepared you for to see the name on the mail. You're like, oh, yeah. Well, that's what's something the... else that nobody prepares. We like you. For, bye bye, right? baby. We do love you, Bye Bye Baby, by the way. One of my favorite hangouts, <laughs> You want to be a sponsor? No, Come I, join I us. hate you, Bye Bye Baby. No, no, shut up. No, no. Let her be a sponsor. We Let love Bye Bye Baby. Oh, yeah. I still, okay. I still on. love You'd Bye Bye Baby. You'd be amazing. We will delete that out. I, by all means. Gladly. I love Bye Bye Baby, regardless. <laughs> I really the do. The whole suite of company. You're you're pretty impressive. Great cribs, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no one prepares you for, like, hmm, let me how can I phrase this. It's okay to be selfish. Hmm. Uh, 
some we will, it's like some people will take offense to that, but like who cares? Um, a great support that me and Joellen had was Amy Kramer. Uh, she uh, was, deals with the you know lost and bereave, uh, bereavement parents at Sisters Hospital, who also, by the way, added our information to their uh, thank you, Amy, something like that. Thank you, Amy. Thank, thank you, Sisters Amy. Hospital here in Buffalo, New York. Um, but she pinpointed this with me and Joellen, like you know what? Take your time. Be selfish. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. This is your time to deal with the situation. I took this as in telling everyone else, fuck off, leave us alone. And that's what I did. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. Excuse me. I'm taking my time with my family. I don't want to talk to anyone else. And that's what I did. And I don't give a fuck about it. I'm not going to lie to you. Because yeah. it benefited my household. We got a great communication between you know that time after we lost Story to where we are now. Me and Jolin have probably the best communication we have ever had in our life. Thank you, Amy Kramer, for telling everyone else to fuck off. Yeah, I like that. Nobody prepares you for a loss and then how to deal with the people like after it. So oh, it's like right. you're saying oh. like, oh, it's okay to be selfish and take your time. Do what's right for you and your family and your right. partner. Oh, I'm, I'm getting sweaty palms. Yep. This is oh, sister. B, B has something. Uh, I love I'm it, this, Brandon. I'm the yeah. same one Thanks. here. Like, it is not okay, other people, <laughs> to make our grief yours. Right. Oh, yeah. If you're not watching the video, Brandon oh. is drinking and losing <laughs> his GD mind over here. I'm sorry. I got choked up on that one. That was a real one. <laughs> you are allowed to participate. Woo. Of course. Speak it. But this is not your grief. Speak it. And how we are grieving is the only thing that matters. B, can you say that a little louder for people in the back? <laughs> it is the only thing that matters. And you have to be okay with that support system. And and you have to be exactly what I just called you, the support system. Mm -hmm. like, yes, this is your 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 family or your close relative or whatever the child that is being that has been lost is in that relationship to you but at the end of the day you are not that parent and mm. the parent mm. dictates the path mm. and i i've seen far too many times from our own experiences uh, i i did speak on your behalf a little bit there i said in episode of one i wouldn't but uh some nodding heads you mm -hmm. know it, like this is our grief and we mm -hmm. have to be okay to be selfish too. And, and fellas, listen to this. Tell them. This often comes up on holidays and anniversaries. Ooh. Ooh. And we are going to do more GG Q and A's about those specific moments, you know, especially when we go into like, we've got one planned 10 months from now when we're in, you know, November, and December, going to the holidays to talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's super triggering times and people want to be a part of that. And we get that, but you dictate how that grief goes mm. and you have to be willing to be selfish in those moments. Absolutely. I think I had somebody say Clint they were like Mark. planning an event for Austin to like grieve him. And I was like, what? <laughs> wait, wait, no, like you're not going to run this by me first or, you know, my wife. Yeah. Wait, 30 seconds. I'm Good sorry. intentions. Someone, so, someone wanted to plan an event for your child. Yeah. 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 They wanted to grieve over my child. And I was like, uh, what? No. Like, yes, you can grieve, but, but you're like inviting people to grieve with you without oh, us is, there. Yeah. What crazy. Great. Crazy. I know crazy. our listeners have some crazy friends and family out there that can relate to this. This might be my favorite episode, guys. Um, I agree. Stars. Fellas, what nobody prepares you for, my last one here, we each have three. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one's probably a little more, um, at least I, I, I put this one in for me, uh, maybe not as much for Brian and, and less for Brandon, mm -hmm. is that people will write off your pregnancy losses like they don't matter as much. Mm -hmm. And for you guys that have been in the path that I have of, you know, 20 week loss pregnancies, 14 week loss pregnancies, uh, six pregnancy losses in totality. I've literally had people, when you go back to the question that we were talking about earlier, like people say stupid shit to you. Um, you know, I've had where I've said, you know, we've lost a child and like, oh, you know, how old are they? Uh, 20 weeks pregnant. Oh, 
like the tone in the voice, like, oh, well, that's not so bad is the tone that I hear. Right. Like, right. Like, uh, you know, no. at least they were, what my brain interprets is like, at least they were never a living child. And at least, you know, this and that and the other thing, like, that's all I hear you saying and completely diminishing. Dismissing. Yes. Dismiss, dismissing is the right yeah. word. Dismissing. The emotion and the experience. Also, and, like, normalizing it. Like, yes. That's like, uh, oh, like, uh, try again. It happens. Just have yeah. sex yeah, again. Yeah. And Just go back in there. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I thought about, like, you know, you make it to the NFL. You get signed by a team. You get signed by the unbelievable Buffalo Bills. Yeah. And, Great job. Brandon Bean. Yeah, Brandon Bean. Bean. Yeah, Big he's, Bean. He's a genius. Um, and then you get cut in the preseason. And people hey, are like, oh, but you made, made it. it. Like, you know, no. Or maybe I'm being a little uh, flippant here with the the, the correlation. Comparison. But, like, you know, no. My goal was to make it to the NFL, not to just get signed to a squad. My goal was to be a father to Beckham and Ariana and to yeah. raise these children and to show them a beautiful life, not to carry them for 14 or 20 weeks or, you know, and, and the others that we've lost. Like, to just dismiss the fact that those pregnancies didn't matter Never. as much and as to others. Not understand the emotions that go along with it that you and the five year it. fucking yeah. journey that Jessica yeah. and I have been on <laughs> to try to have yeah. one more child, mm -hmm. one more. Like that's yeah, we wanted more, but if you had given us one more, our hearts would have been exploding. They're already unbelievably full because of Ashton, but mm -hmm. one more would have been pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and for people to just write it off like, oh, well, go back like, to the roulette table and just keep throwing like or you know, crap table and keep throwing dice. Like you gave it a good college the try works. there, but yeah, that's right? what it feels like. I Brian, I know with your loss, probably not as as relatable. Brandon, do you get no, this but at all with you, like yeah. 36 I, weeks? I got that just with 36 weeks. And like some even my, some of my staff members can't like came to Joel and was like, you know, you still can try again. And we're like, do you understand? They wrote on the wall. She, she <laughs> is classified a thirty. What well, she was thirty six then at the time. Thirty six weeks. Yeah. Thirty. Yeah. No, but Joellen was like thirty. Oh, was, yeah, yeah. Thirty. That sounds right. So like, yeah. they they geriatric. They yeah, classified her word. as geriatric. Yeah, uh, P.S., uh, medical professionals listening once again, uh, here's Thank another you. term that you need to throw the fuck out. Is geriatric <laughs> for women that are pregnant? Jesus uh, that Christ. one just does not go over well. Um, yeah, and like, <laughs> um, babe, you're not geriatric. You're you're still my sweet little thing. Like, yeah. what? No, you don't say this to women. Like, what is going on here? Yeah. Did we miss the yeah. memo? Yeah, Did we like, miss? All right understood like you know it Jesus gets harder Christ. as you get older yes Check. that is it is an understood fact but both you know the medical profession how they respond to something like literally how they classify some of those things and then people just saying like oh yeah you know 20 weeks you can go uh, try yeah no i've gotten that very sort of shruggish oh oh that's oh. tough but mm. yeah no type of response It'll and that hurts okay, more yeah. than anything yeah, punch him in the face. Brian, how about you, bud? Nobody prepares you for dealing, identifying the friends that are there for you after a loss, especially the ones that you think will be there and are not, and then mm. the ones that you wouldn't think would be there for you, but they are. Mm. This is my beatnik snips here. Oh, How you doing yeah, that? Get are, those we jazz here? are we here? Jazz fingers oh, or yeah. spoken preach, word? Preach, preach. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it, we all have a ton of friends and family out there. And it is, I do want to say, it's not an easy thing to react to. Mm -hmm. what we went through, you know, it, it's, it's very sad. And some people aren't prepared to deal with it. And uh, you know what? That's okay. That's your prerogative, but it's amazing when you go through some of this, the, the people that do step up for you and some of them will surprise you. And yeah. I've had that. It, we've had that in our, in our life. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's also the people that don't step up that also surprise you for not stepping up because you're like, uh, what's going on? Where yeah. you're my boy, you're, you're or my girl, if your girl listening, like, where are you? I haven't heard from you. Like, yeah, you're inviting me to go get, you know, like drinks, but not acknowledging the fact that we just yeah. lost a child or, so, yeah. you know, like, oh, just, just come and have just having like a normal conversation. Like- and you're like, I, I don't have normal conversations anymore. I'm sorry. And we're, we're done with that. but then you get <laughs> we're, like, we're done with that. yeah. And then, but then you get an amazing, you know, call from somebody you haven't heard from in a while and they just want to see how you're doing and talk to you and see how your family's doing. And it's like, Whoa, where this feels amazing. Thank you. You know, and those, I don't want to say it like brings out the true colors of certain friends and people. You're absolutely absolutely correct. I mean, what do they say? Like, you know, when somebody's at their lowest, like that's where people's true colors shine, you know, as far as your support system. So, and and we level set like on episode number one, like we know there's not always the, I, I remember saying like, I wasn't there for you two as much as you were there for me because I hadn't been through it yet. So like check, put on the table, the fact that people that haven't been through it don't understand how to support through it as well. Right. I, I am a living testament you on that of one. that. I beg, I beg to differ with you on that one. Because I'm your brother-in-law? Well, absolutely. But <laughs> outside like, I, of that, I will though, gladly take some criticism. No, but no, you're not. I, I, I can... Definitely it's disagree human with fucking you on that. nature, right? You, know, you, you like, but you stepped up, B. Like you stepped up to the plate more than like most, and maybe than average Joe type of thing, right? But but you definitely stepped up, even if it was just like a. But natural I, what I can't catch. say is because if that was because of my you know unbelievable empathetic uh, disposition for what you're right. going through, or the fact that I love you and my sister. More than yeah, but, you know, my own but life. You did, but you, you did it. But you truly cared you did about it. You cared, them, and you, know? you actually yeah, reached enough. out. And that's so, the, so the point. Isn't that, you know? I I guess where I was being a little self deprecating mm-hmm. is was like, I get the fact that I I've seen loss mm-hmm. and not been there at least to the extent that I would like to be there. I appreciate Correct. the you know the, mm-hmm. the 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 comments. Um, but there's a learning here maybe for people too of. It, I, the people that like I hadn't talked to in 10 years that sent a message that I couldn't wait to go to Jessica and be like, you got to read this. Like, mm-hmm. look at this person that I went to college with, you know, 15 years ago, or I played mm-hmm. hockey with a lifetime ago that reached out to just say some kind words. And then friends and two of my best friends in the world, Brian, you know them dearly. Uh, Brandon, you do too. They're in our wedding and they're, they're, they're a huge support of the pods and love them to death. And I'm not saying anything that, they wouldn't agree to be true. I remember you know, months after losing Beckham, being yep. with them, uh, it was still COVID. We were socially distancing, watching the beginning of the NHL season. Uh, and we were just sort of like, you know, all spread out into room. And at least a half a dozen times I tried to bring up Beckham. At least. I remember you talking about that. Not in a morbid way or anything like that, but just in a cathartic, like, here's what's on my heart. Mm-hmm best friends like i need to talk and no reciprocation cricket and that and look yeah, like, it's like a change of subject I, yes exactly and like yeah me. that's tough yeah. uh, oh look at that pass so uh, what a goal right like mm-hmm. and again two of my best friends in the world that doesn't change any of that mm-hmm. like i understand because of what i put on the table you know a minute and a half ago that like if you haven't been through it you might not know how to respond mm-hmm. and sometimes you just you know, it's path of least resistance. Um, but man, I guess my point here is the people that do fucking step up. Yeah. Isn't it unbelievable? The power and, that and the have? ones that surprise you. Yes. That's what I mean. Better right? feeling too. Yes. Cause like anybody listening to this right now, I, I encourage you. Like if you have a friend that goes through loss, most of the people listening have gone through loss, but send a text, you know, we got, letters from family that dedicated a church service to Austin. And they're just like, we're thinking about you and we love you. Like those little things mean something. And maybe you haven't heard from them in a long time, like you said, Brad, but 
I mean, it, it feels good to just hear somebody say, I'm thinking about you. I'm here with you. I'm thinking about Austin yeah. or Story or Beckham and say their name. Like, you're like, hell yeah. Okay. He's still here, you know? Right. And we still get a text, you know, mm-hmm. from random people on his birthday that they're like, happy birthday, Austin. And it means the world to us because he's still, you know, in people's thoughts. Great point. Be, be, I'm going to add one more thing, and I know this. Be there's a particular person in our family, family friends, that surprised the mess out of me. In our situation, even in yours, I think she may have contacted you on the ride home just to listen. Oh, Lori. Lori. We, we can give her love. This is the positive one. Lori. Absolutely. Lori stepped out and stepped in and yeah. surprised the bejesus out of me. Was she That's someone awesome. that you didn't expect? No, or, it's or my mom's not, best friend. Expect, right. Brian, okay. Brian, you might remember. She gave a reading at a, my yeah. wedding. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, sure. But, like, you know, she's sort of on that next tier, right? Like, she's not right. an immediate family type mm-hmm. of thing. And I remember, you know, yeah, when, especially when I lost Ari, like, having a call with her on my drive home new, from mm-hmm. New Jersey when I'd never yeah. felt more alone in my life. And her just, like pulling out of me all the things that my heart needed to scream Mm -hmm. and having that conversation right then and there and putting it on the table. And that was, that was pretty incredible. Yeah. That she definitely, she just stepped up for us with story and what do you need here? I'll take Gavi. Do you need food? Bringing food over just. Yeah, it was beautiful. So Lori, we love you. Thank you. And, you know, I I realize there's probably not a whole lot of listeners of the Mm -hmm. Lori's of the world and people Mm -hmm. that, are that support system but the listeners are the people that are the brad brandon bryans and our spouses Mm -hmm. tell those people how much they mean to you yes tell your lori or your whomever that person is the impact that they've had on your life because it just helps you continue to go through this it's another opportunity to speak your child's name and say when you helped me through austin or story or Mm -hmm. beckham or ariana um it, it puts it front and center and it just feels good. And we need it some does. feel good in our lives. We it do. does. It does. Brian, or Brandon, take us home. Last nobody. One. We're going to do more Last of these. One. We have to. No one, nobody prepares you hmm. for the community that you have right now. Um, This community, I call it the unfair crew, but hmm. you don't really... <laughs> It's it's a it's a group or community that no one really wants to sign up for or no one wants to sign up or no one wants to be in. But literally, once you're in, I say this like so like weird like it's a pledging like alpha you whatever. But like <laughs> when did the dance? The top so like you. the New no. York Jets. Oh! Nobody wants to be a part of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like what? <laughs> that was good. Once you're in, like you don't realize so many people have had the, a similar or a same or likeness of a story just like yours. And you guys like instantly become family. Um, mm. And you can't take that away. You know kind of what they're feeling. They know kind of what you're feeling. And you're like protective of them immediately. You hear their stories. There's stories I've heard. I'm ready to fight doctors on site. There's yep. nurses I want to fight on site. There's pe- other like family members I would never meet of theirs I want to see on site. Yeah, some of our guests during right. the interviews when they're telling their stories, you're like, what? what do you mean? Like, yeah, right. Or and they're, they're becoming our family, family too. Like, exactly. I don't know about you guys, but like, I've known Shane for a long time. Like, mm-hmm. I met Shane in 2001, and Jeez. I think I feel closer with Shane in 2023 than I did in 2001. Yeah, fantastic. Right? Mitch Middlestad. I had no clue the guy existed. You know, right. three weeks ago, and yeah, now he's. I'm going to be in that guy's corner every day of my life. Totally. Yep. And, and every other sure. one that's going to come, like that's yeah. pretty powerful, right, boys? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a community. This podcast is a community. That's what we want to expand on, not start, because it's it's already there. But man, it. None of us w- wish we were here in this community, but at the same time, it's made us all closer and bonded us for life. Absolutely. You know what I remember? Um, mm-hmm. Mid COVID, uh, this is a perfect uh, ending here, and then on this on this topic too. <laughs> I remember 
it was right as people were starting to like fully dip their toe outside of COVID, right? Like not the early, early stage, but you know, maybe, you know, 16, 18 months later. And Brandon was in town in Connecticut when I was still living there. And Brian has a, a country club membership and we went and golfed, the three of us. <laughs> remember remember this, yeah. boys? Yeah, I did. And we had masks. We yep. wore masks the whole yes, time. Oh, yeah. Did. Yes, we did. And, and we took a selfie wearing masks. Yes, we did. On the, the tee box of the we, first we gotta, hole. We got to put that up here, bud. <laughs> and we will. We will. You know, frankly, I was going to use it as an early, but I'm like, we're masks. So it, like, yeah. you cover so much and we're all wearing hats too because it was a nice day. I got yeah. super burnt on my bald head and the Stupid. back part that wasn't covered. Gosh. Um I remember this photo so distinctly taking the selfie and, and with our masks, smiling, you know, smizing, Smiley and smile. then putting the phone down and being like, man, we're a part of a really fucked up community, but I am yeah. so happy to be with it with you boys. <laughs> yeah. I remember Cheers. you saying that. Like, right? who knew like yeah. two years later, we'd be here, here. every couple of weeks just chatting it up. Yeah. This, I, that's awesome. And I think for the listeners, you know, we've we've gotten a lot of outreach, um, which is so uh, appreciated of people saying, like, I wish I had a Brandon and a Brian in my life like you do. Um, let, me, let me let me pause you there. No, you don't. I hope you have as close of friends as a Brandon and a Brian as I do, but not that they've gone through what we've all gone through. Correct. Like this community and bond that we have is one that we all know that we wish we would never wish upon anybody. Uh, I hope you have as close of relationships, but uh, count yourself lucky that you are not that close with that many people that have gone through the type of loss that we have. Uh, it has made us stronger going through our loss. So I can understand where the sentiment comes from, but, what I also encourage you to do is you know, only until recently did some of this stuff and until we continue to be a beacon in this, not just we as in guys in grief, but we as a general community become a beacon in this space. Does this stuff become destigmatized? Oh. You know, five, 10 years ago, you, know, you didn't talk about child loss, let alone the male impact of child loss. I mean, there's a reason why we are the first podcast in North America and only the second one in the world doing what we're doing because men don't talk about this. But guys, I guarantee you there's somebody in your life that's been through this, that knows what you're going through. And if you're brave enough to share your story and continue to put yourself out there, there's going to be somebody that's going to catch the other line of your, uh, the, the hook that you're throwing out there and you're going to find your brand and your Brian. And theirs might be 10, 15, 20 years ago, but there's going to be something there that's connected. Or you're going to meet that person in a small group or whatever it might be, or hell, you're going to maybe meet that person and connect with them through our podcast. And that'd be pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is a community that exists and it's vibrant and it's sorrowful, but we're here and let's support each other. And I think that's a pretty beautiful thing. Yeah. You said we're here. Yeah. Like th there's no changing it. So yeah, good all point. we can do is be there for each other because well, you bully that one out there and there's yeah. no changing it. Yeah. There isn't. It's we're sorry. Here. It, we're, yeah. we're in this community and you've got two options. You can be sad, feel alone, or embrace the the community that you're in. And we're all here to help each other get through this because it sucks. It really sucks. Yeah. And I'm thankful I have you guys and our listeners and everybody that's reached out. Like, it feels good to hear you, the stories that you have gone through because I want you to know we're always thinking about them and praying for them, but you're, it, it makes me feel that I'm also not alone. There's other yeah. people out there, you know, still four years later, you know, it feels good to see that there's people across the world or across the country that have gone Shout through out Kenya. similar. Yeah. No, I like Estonia. What's up, Estonia? Yeah, Estonia. Hold on, brother. Malaysia. Uh, but no, it, it, Malaysia. You. Like, Canada. We love you guys. You know, we want to build a community and we want to add to it. Yeah. Can I can I leave on one last note and then we have to I know we have to Bring go. It. Sure. You know what sucks? 
my golf game. So I think we need to hang it out really one more does. time. <laughs> oh boy, what, Brandon, does. one more time is one more time is not going to be the solution, I, but, my but friend. That, so, so that means we all need to hang out again and play golf yeah. again, so I can work on my golf game. I don't know. You're can, a sandbagger, though. Like I that's true, so right? You I had drive my first. And then you knocked it on the green. I had one good drive, and that was probably the second best drive of my life. Uh. We need to do it again. So, with that note. I love you guys. We gotta play golf again. <laughs> Can we post that picture of us too? Like, absolutely, absolutely. When we release airs. this episode, we're gonna yeah. post that one too. I think that'll be it's great. an awesome picture, guys. This is probably my most cathartic episode, other than sharing my story. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I'm hoping, listeners, you all felt the same. This was Please. this is the real talk we've been talking about, and we've mm-hmm. you know we've dubbed Mitch Middlestad as the the truth bomb because man, that dude threw man. some out there. And Shane's yeah. open heart after mm-hmm. six weeks and you know, hearing our stories and everything and, and all that's incredible. Um, there's no but here. Mm-hmm. And, and this episode where we just dove into the, th- the stuff that we feel like you all are dealing with because we're dealing with it too. Um, we hope you got a lot out of this. I- I've really enjoyed this, guys. And uh, Me too. Yeah. Me too. Me three. Thank it, you for it this. Feels this good. the podcast. I feel like this we're connecting it. with you guys. Yeah, this is what we started the podcast to do is I feel like if this is what men's group therapy was, I'd show up to that every week. Hell yeah. Right. And so we're going to be this for you guys more and more. And we, there's a huge component of this, of hearing each other's stories and going really deep on certain topics. Uh, The G and G Q and a we love, and you all seem to love. So we're going to keep going with that. Obviously we're going to keep bringing guests because that matters. And we want people to be able to speak their children's names. That matters. Obviously the topics we get post those conversations matter. Um, But maybe that we got onto something here too. So we're super excited about this. Uh, Fellas, any final words? It's okay to say, fuck you, man. Don't yeah. say that to me. I got to change this. I had to get one last F bomb in there. Oh, Sorry. Boy, well, you might hit the triple X soon because of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay to be selfish. Take your time. Take your time. Agreed. We, we love you guys. We Thanks love for you your support. All. Love you guys. Thank you all for listening. And we'll talk to you next week. <laughs> If you valued from this content, we ask you to share this podcast with others that can equally benefit. Leave us a five-star review on whichever platform you're listening to help us improve our outreach and to follow Guys in Grief on Instagram and Facebook. Also, if you'd like to join us and share your story, email us at guysandgrief at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week.